Tonight on Cronkite News, a new education program is looking to help students make up for lost learning time during the pandemic. The reason some are excited about the program. Plus, protecting our environment. The report claims state legislators didn't do enough to protect the environment. State leaders weigh in tonight. And the Phoenix Mercury are looking to finish strong on a season that didn't go quite as planned. How the team is dealing with a season full of adversity. Good evening and welcome to Cronkite News. I'm Aaron Gonzalez. And I'm Alex DaCosta. Thank you for joining us. The Department of Education is announcing a new proposal to help students make up for the time they lost in school during the pandemic. The new funding will be dedicated to tutoring services, but not everyone is happy about it. Cronkite News reporter Tabitha Bland is live in our newsroom with the reason why. And Tabitha, where is this money coming from? The federal government gave $2.7 billion to Arizona to combat the learning loss after the pandemic. Arizona Department of Education Superintendent Tom Korn announced yesterday that students who did not pass their proficiency tests can receive free tutoring. The tutors will be paid, but at the expense of partnering organizations. Is $40 million. It'll pay for 1.3 million hours of tutoring. Tom Horn introduced a new tutoring program for Arizona students, leaving Arizonans with an important question. Where did this money come from? The federal government gave Arizona $2.7 billion to make up for learning loss during COVID. Valley of the Sun, YMCA, and over 25 other organizations were asked to submit data to show their students improved their English and math proficiency, but they were only given five days. Those that were not able to do so, we canceled their contracts and took the money back. Um, if they can't do it, we will do it. Organizations that did not show enough academic gain had their funding canceled or reduced. In a statement, Valley of the Sun YMCA says, the termination of this grant jeopardizes our ongoing efforts to support the mental health of youth educators, a goal we had mutually agreed upon. Our grant agreement did not stipulate the measurement of academic outcomes, so it is unreasonable to hold a grantee accountable for undisclosed metrics. It was purely data driven. If they, if they had made, they could show academic progress, they kept their money. If they did not show academic progress in the data, then, then we took it back. The money will now be used to pay teachers to tutor for the new program. They will receive $30 an hour and a stipend that depends on the progress shown within a six week window. In the newsroom, Tabitha Bland, Cronkite News. Meanwhile, two Arizona community colleges are set to receive more than $9 million in funding. Cronkite News reporter Adriana Gonzalez Chavez explains who the money will benefit. Single mother of four, Christy Dupree feels fortunate for the funding she has received to continue her education in social work. You know, go to school for free um, to empower, I think it said, the next generation of behavioral health care professionals. Dupree wants to help other families from low-income communities that have been impacted by mental health like her own. So behavioral health is a big piece of my story. Um, you know, me growing up with behavioral health in my family, I've seen my own family struggle from my mom to my sister. House Bill 2691 was signed earlier this year to address the need for behavioral health workers in Arizona and grant the money to community colleges. They identified areas that had uh, high uh, needs in terms of behavioral health. So, of course, Maricopa County with uh, its... Uh, uh, you know, large population, and uh, and then Navajo and Apache counties that we serve here in, in northeastern Arizona. Jeremy Razor is a dean at Northland Pioneer College and says the need for behavioral health workers in northern Arizona has been big since the pandemic. Many students that are coming to us with an interest in the program have, a, have had personal experience with behavioral health in some way whether it's themselves or a family member, and uh, so they are looking for opportunities to educate themselves so that they can better support uh, their communities and their families. Dupree looks forward to helping others in her community as she continues her education. It blows my socks off some days. I'm just like, is that, you know, when I write papers or when I'm in certain situations, you know, like being on camera, you know, it's, 
it just shows you the potential you have. Students interested apply through their colleges to receive the scholarships. In Phoenix, Adriana Gonzalez Chavez, Cronkite News. Residents in the Rio Verde foothills have some much needed news today when it comes to the state of their water. They will no longer need to truck it in. Since the start of this year, residents in the unincorporated area had to truck water in after their water supply was cut off by the city of Scottsdale. Last night, Scottsdale city leaders struck an agreement with the newly created Rio Verde Foothills Standpipe District. The agreement allows Rio Verde residents to have access to Scottsdale's water once again. Residents in the unincorporated area will have to apply to be in the new district. City leaders say there are still a couple of administrative hurdles, but water is expected to flow by the end of the month. The Grand Canyon chapter of the Sierra Club is out with its annual report card of legislators during the 2023 session. The reporter ranks elected officials on their action in the environment. Cronkite News reporter Sydney Whitty is live in our newsroom. In Sydney, a lot of the state's legislators did not perform too well. That's right. A lot of them received failing grades. Key topics discussed in the report card were climate change, environmental justice, air quality, and water conservation. This comes just after the American Lung Association gave Maricopa County an F for ozone pollution. The Arizona legislature seems to be divided on the Sierra Club's briefing. State Representative Nancy Gutierrez, who is a yoga teacher at Tucson High Magnet School, says she sees the direct effects of air pollution on students. Our other PE students are outside and so many more kids these days seem to have lung problems, asthma and, you know, more instances of bronchitis and pneumonia. While Senator John Kavanaugh believes money needs to be spent elsewhere. There are a lot of other, you know, people saying, feed me, feed me, we need money. You know, uh, you know, it's health care, there's roads, there's public safety. So the environment, the, the, uh, the Sierra Club got to understand it's not all about the environment. We have, to, we have to consider other people's needs and wants and their ability to pay. The Sierra Club was encouraged by some passing initiatives, but say more needs to be done by the legislature. We all know it takes both houses of the legislature and the governor to really address these issues properly. The report card emphasized several climate-focused provisions in the state budget bill SB 1720. More than $35 million is for water quality and statewide water resource planning funds. The initiatives intend to locate and deliver clean water to the state's 7.4 million residents. And I'm hoping that more cities throughout the state, especially in Maricopa County, will take Tucson's lead in their conservation. But the truth is that we can't conserve our way out of our water crisis. Kavanaugh calls the Sierra Club's requests extreme and says everything is a cost-benefit analysis. Republican legislators tend to shy away from excessive regulation. Uh, we try to keep the costs for consumers down. Uh, and as a result, uh, we're not willing to go as far as the Sierra Club wants to go in terms of things like uh, pollution control and clean energy uh, and the like. The Sierra Club also focuses on transportation initiatives at the national and state level. I'm Sydney Whitty in the newsroom for Cronkite News. Back to you. The Phoenix City Council has a vote scheduled today that could legalize backyard casitas, duplexes, and triplexes, meant to help combat the housing crisis. Though some are concerned that those casitas and guest houses could be used for short-term rentals, which wouldn't help the long-term housing situation. The council already voted last month to accept $10 million to fund two affordable housing projects in the city. Half of the money will go to converting an old Super 8 motel into a supportive living facility. The rest of the funding will go to constructing mixed income housing in the areas just east of downtown Phoenix. And over in Tempe, city leaders are looking to partner with a nonprofit to operate one of the city's homeless shelters. City council leaders will vote on a contract for Mercy Living Centers to operate Sue's Espacio on Apache Boulevard. Shelter is home to 40 beds. According to a city council filing, patients would be sent to the shelter at the city's discretion. Shelter would attempt to transition patients to permanent housing and employment. The nonprofit already works with the city of Phoenix. If approved, the $1.6 million contract would begin in mid-October. Coming up next, federal regulators are pushing to recall 52 million airbags. 
We'll tell you what airbags to look out for and why the recall isn't official. Plus, we got some storms last weekend, but this week won't be the same. The heat is coming along with the rest of your forecasts up next. Find out what's on Arizona PBS at azpbs.org slash schedule. My heart is racing right now. Fasten your seatbelt. You're uncovering the truth. These are consequential things. Yeah. <laughs> oh, look at everybody. <gasps> I feel the presence of all these people. I've got history. <laughs> no. I wish my ma could be here to see this. Amazing. It's like the most vital stuff, right? Tuesdays on Arizona PBS. ASU's one and only student-run radio station, Blaze Radio, provides students with opportunities to cover a variety of topics. From music... This is Sensity Garage. ...to sports coverage... Against the Brewers in his last outing, he went like... ...to news... The bill also gives parents the ability to see... ...and entertainment updates. Blaze Radio offers a fun environment to gain valuable broadcast experience. To find out more, visit blazeradioonline.com. Federal safety regulators are pushing to recall 52 million airbags that may cause case safety risks for drivers. The National Highway Traffic Safety Administration is trying to get vehicles using airbags made by ARC and Delphi recalled. Regulators say two people have died and seven more have been injured due to ruptured inflators. Just last May, General Motors recalled nearly one million vehicles due to the airbags and federal authorities don't have the power to issue recalls on their own. Manufacturers have to agree to them. Despite AROC disputing the claims, the NHTSA is moving ahead to force a recall with a hearing next month. Next year's federal cuts on Colorado River water used by Arizona and other states will be less severe than originally thought. Due to the reservoirs having a chance to recover during the wet winter we had last year, the Federal Bureau of Reclamation scaled back water cuts for 2024. The original cuts for Arizona was going to be 592,000 acre feet, but that was reduced to 512,000 acre feet. Experts say it's not common to have two good winters in back-to-back -back years, but that is what Basin States and Mexico are hoping for as they continue to negotiate new water use agreements for 2026. A tropical storm forming in the Atlantic has now turned into a hurricane. Take a look here. The storm is set to come close to the East Coast this weekend. This is the projection of Hurricane Lee right now and heading into the weekend. As you can see, the storm is quite a ways away in the middle of the Atlantic near the Leeward Islands. The National Hurricane Center says it is too hard to predict where the storm will exactly hit, but the results could be devastating. Forecasters predict this could turn into a Category 4 hurricane by Saturday. The anticipated storm follows Hurricane Idalia, which hit the East Coast last week. Meanwhile, here, there are no storms in sight, just heat. Adriana Gonzalez Chavez joins us from the Cronkite News Weather Center. Good evening, folks. We're at about 100 degrees right now. We're going to go all the way down to 94 degrees by 10 p.m. Looking into our future cast, we have some good news for the southeast part of Arizona. Tucson and Sierra Vista might see some light chances of storms for Friday morning. And then looking at our low temperatures, Grand Canyon is going to cool all the way down to 46 degrees. Phoenix will cool down to 83 degrees and Flagstaff will cool down to 50 degrees for our lows on Thursday. 
Looking into our highs, Phoenix and the southwest part of Arizona are going to be in the triple digits, while the Grand Canyon will be at 84 degrees for their high, Flagstaff 82, Sedona being pretty warm at 93 degrees. Looking into our future forecast, Thursday through Saturday we're going to see clear skies. Thursday at 109 degrees with Saturday hitting a high of 114 degrees. While we have some good news for Monday, Tuesday, Monday we'll see some cloud coverage while Tuesday we'll have a 20% chance of rain and then we'll clear back up by Wednesday, Thursday, staying at 102 degrees for both days. I'm Adriana Gonzalez Chavez from the Cronkite Weather Center. Now to you, Ryan. Thanks, Adriana. I'm Ryan Bunnell, and coming up after the break, I'll have your Cronkite Sports Report. Drake was in the house last night, but what sports star was watching in the VIP suite? More from Desert Diamond Arena next. Three, two, one. Cronkite News. Get real professional experience in areas such as reporting, broadcast editing, and behind the scenes production, such as technical director and audio. To full kill the mics. Or go out in the field and cover important local stories. Learn and master the English language. In a fun, welcoming atmosphere. Cronkite News. The future starts now. Here at the Walter Cronkite School, students produce award-winning content that focuses on health disparities in underserved communities and how to turn things around. In Cronkite News and Cronkite Noticias, students cover stories that affect people of color, the LGBTQ community, people with disabilities, and others across the Southwest. We highlight big problems that are often overlooked in communities that are underserved. Those stories not only inform and educate people about the challenges, but we work hard to highlight potential solutions. In the Cronkite Agency, students work to connect with community members through social media campaigns in English and Spanish. Being a Hispanic myself, it's nice to be able to give back to my own community. Find more of our health coverage at cronkitenews.azpbs.org. Welcome to the Cronkite Sports Report. I'm Ryan Bunnell. The WNBA regular season is nearly over and the Phoenix Mercury are limping to the finish line. The shorthanded Mercury fell to the Washington Mystics last night, marking their ninth consecutive loss. Interim head coach Nikki Blue had only eight players available for Tuesday night's game, in which the Mercury lost 100-77. Michaela Onyenwere led the scoring for Phoenix, finishing with 19 points, while Brittany Griner surpassed 5,000 career points, becoming the 24th WNBA player to ever accomplish the milestone. The season-long issue of injuries was prominent in last night's game, as Blue stated managing the team's health inconsistencies is one of the hardest things she's ever done. I didn't think our energy, I didn't think we gave our, our best uh, effort like we usually do, um, but partially because uh, I think our numbers are pretty limited. And, you know, there's, it's really tough uh, as far as, like, consistency-wise and... Um, uh, yeah, we just, we just don't have enough players right now. The Mercury have two games remaining this season and will look to end things on a positive note. Phoenix takes on the Las Vegas Aces this Friday in the final home game of the 2023 season. The U.S. Open showcases some of the best tennis players in the world, and Coco Gauff is adding her name into that conversation by making history. On Tuesday, the 19-year-old became the first American teenager to reach the Final Four at Flushing Meadows since Serena Williams in 2001. Goff defeated number 20 Yelena Ostapenko in two sets, sweeping her in one of them. Up next for Goff, she will face number 10 Karolina Mohova on Thursday. The ASU women's golf team teased it up for the first time this season on Monday at the McGuire Invitational in Albuquerque, New Mexico. Expectations are high for the team as Golf Channel recently ranked the Sun Devils number eight in the country going into the season. Despite strong individual performances last year, the team was able to secure only one win. With all six members of the team returning, including three-time All-American Ashley Minnie, the hope is that the experience pushes the squad to greater success. Competition-wise, I 100% believe that we can win more 
than we did last year. I feel like everyone's just more like accustomed to like tournament golf, especially like team golf with like each other. And I think just from a team standpoint, we're, I think we're definitely closer than we've ever been. And I think that's just been so much fun and even better like for when we're competing. Former Notre Dame prep standout and current Arizona State wide receiver Jake Smith will not be suiting up for the Sun Devils this season. The NCAA is denying his transfer waiver because ASU will be the second school Smith is transferred to before graduating. The redshirt junior began his career at Texas in 2019 where he played his first two seasons before transferring to USC. Smith has not seen game action since 2020 due to injuries and appealed to play for the Sun Devils this season after he was declared a medical non-counter at USC due to a foot injury. It's heartbreaking, it's frustrating, it's deflating. Um, it feels like a David and Goliath battle against a student athlete and the organization that is supposed to exist to protect their, their well-being and, and help them achieve their dreams. And I, I don't understand it. ASU men's basketball announced that they will start the season in Chicago against a team from the SEC. The Sun Devils are taking part in the Barstool Sports Invitational at Wintrust Arena. Their first opponent is Mississippi State on November 8th. Florida Atlantic and Loyola Chicago play in the other game. And ASU last played the Bulldogs in 2018 and came out of that one with the victory. NASCAR and Phoenix Children's teamed up to raise awareness and raise some money for the hospital in this year's NASCAR Championship Ignition Luncheon. Cronkite News reporter Jeff Hinkle was at the Arizona Biltmore where drivers and community members alike got together. All the NASCAR championship action at Phoenix Raceway doesn't start until early November, but some drivers made an early trip out to Phoenix to help raise awareness and raise some money at a special luncheon for Phoenix Children's. For the drivers, like 2021 NASCAR champion Kyle Larson, it's the little things of an event like this that mean the most. It means a lot to me that I can come here and be a part of it and help raise money um, for, their, for their foundation and, and um, put a smile on the family's faces. You know, they're going through tough times, so you know, anytime you can help out, it, it definitely feels good. The second annual luncheon was an opportunity for countless donors around the Valley to team up with NASCAR and give back to the community. 1999 Cup Series champion and NASCAR Hall of Famer Dale Jarrett stressed the importance of the luncheon that strength in numbers can help produce results. We're talking about children here and uh, getting behind this. You know, it, it only takes a little bit of effort uh, to put forth that could make a huge difference in someone's life. And, and I think if you just look at that perspective that um, just a little bit of good can go a long way, uh, it, it's easier to make things happen that way and get people involved. The luncheon brought in 50 $50,000 in support of Phoenix Children's, which is more than last year's total of around 40000 It just goes to show that what the drivers do off the track means just as much as what they do on it. In Phoenix, Jeff Hinkle, Cronkite News. One of music's biggest stars, Drake, is in town for his It's All a Blur tour. One of our own here at Cronkite News was there, and he saw another very familiar face. Take a look at this. Sitting in the VIP suite, our colleague Shamar Woods captured this video. And guess who was jamming along next to him in the other suite? Phoenix Suns all-star guard Devin Booker, just chilling with some Drake. That's about as close as Shamar could get, considering Devin Booker had his normal bodyguards with him. And that's going to be it for this Cronkite Sports Report. Back to you, Aaron. Thanks, Ryan. Coming up next, a Midwest vacation? These tropical birds are popping up in places that aren't so tropical. We'll tell you where and why up next. Find out what's on Arizona PBS at azpbs.org slash schedule. And that's the way it is. Monday, September. Newscasting has changed a lot since the time of Walter Cronkite. That's why here at the Walter Cronkite School of Journalism, you can learn the studio production skills of today in real time. Whether you want to work audio, direct, technical direct, design graphics, or you can even run the floor. It's all part of the Television Production and Graphics Lab here at the Walter Cronkite School of Journalism. We're going on in three, two. Did you know newsrooms today are looking for bilingual journalists? Cronkite Noticias prepares you to cover diverse communities. In Cronkite Noticias, you will obtain an unforgettable experience. Nopales como este van a tumbar. Cronkite Noticias. And develop your skills with the latest technology.
Walter Cronkite School of Journalism and Mass Communications Phoenix Sports Bureau provides students with hands-on learning experiences and opportunities in sports journalism. From covering local high schools, colleges, and the pros, students get the opportunity to go live from our Facebook shows covering local, collegiate, and pro sports in the Valley. From digital reporting, broadcast, social media, and producing, there's opportunities for all. For more, go to cronkitenews.azpbs.org. Residents in the way north of the tropical weather are welcoming some tropical birds. That's right. Normally, Florida and the Caribbean are popular vacation spots, but not for these flamingos. The long-legged birds have been seen in Midwestern states like Ohio and Kentucky, which is far from their tropic homes. Scientists believe the flamingos likely were diverted from their course by the recent hurricane and tropical storms. Experts think the pink birds choose to get away from their extreme weather and some hope they, that they decide to stay as the hurricane season continues on the Atlantic coast. That's it for Cronkite News. Thanks for joining us. <laughs>